Today we are talking about even more data mining from the most recent patch. We're going to talk about the next card after Cthulhu, we're going to talk about the Redditosca rework and we are also going to look at some of the upcoming skins. A lot of this information is provided by Smite Data Mining and another huge batch is provided by Daredust. The links for both will be down below if you want to support them or check out the text form. Also, if you've missed it, there was a massive amount of data mining for Depthy or Cthulhu. And if you want to see that, the link will be in the top right corner right now. And otherwise, it will also be at the end of the video if you want to see it afterwards. So in this one, we're going to start with Tsukuyomi. And this part is from smitedatamining.com. The expectation that Tsukuyomi would be coming to Smite was basically there since the trailer at the start of the season as it showed a Japanese theme and was talking about a moon god. But now we have the name in the file, so it's even more confirmed than before. What's interesting is the ability information that we have so far. Because Tsukuyomi's lore doesn't really give us all too much information. The sibling of Amaterasu and Susano, usually depicted as male, but there is some discussion that it's not even 100% clarified. And that's almost about it then. There's some stories between them, but nothing that would indicate much about what kind of abilities this character would have. The passive that we have so far has stacks and comes with a health heal and a mana heal. That in itself, to be honest, doesn't sound like it's going to be the whole passive because that would be relatively boring. Maybe we'll have some steel mechanic, maybe there will be something else tied to those stacks or anything beyond that, but that's all we have for now. But the next part is already very interesting, and that is the basic attack. So the basic attack has two versions, and one of them is basic mangetsu, which means full moon, which is ranged, a projectile, and has a power hit. And then there's also basic shingetsu, I don't know if either of these pronounced right, but this one is the opposite to full moon, and for the most part, the description here remains the same, range, projector, power hit, but it also has an additional debuff. Now, it is actually extremely interesting that we have ranged basic attacks here, and we will get to that at the end of this. But first, let's look at the other abilities. The first ability has a hit FX and a pickup FX. It also has a projectile. I don't know what the pickup FX is useful for. We know that Ram basically has this with his arrow. But I don't think they would utilize the same mechanic again. So it's going to be interesting what will be picked up here. AMC also comes to mind with his ultimate. He also has a stinger that he can pick up. So maybe it's one of those interactions where you get some benefit from picking up a projectile again in some way. His second ability has a disarm, a hit FX and a main hit so it might have multiple hits. There is no indication on the duration yet, so we can't really tell how much potential is behind this. The third ability is a ground FX with a slow. The ultimate actually has the most information here. It is a projectile, it listens to the passive stacks, remember those restore health and mana, it fires ammunition, but doesn't explain that further yet, and the fire rate is 0.4. This may be something like 2.5 attack speed, so 2.5 shots per second, or something else. Under certain circumstances, this ability can refire. The ability has a maximum ammo count of 4, which is also very interesting for an ultimate, because usually they don't stack, so maybe the projectiles that you can pick up with the first ability may have something to do with the ultimate as well. You can change the fire mode, it has a dash hit, and it marks enemies. So generally speaking, it seems like the kit revolves a lot around some degree of CC with the debuff, the disarm and the slow. And not necessarily hard CC, but rather just tools to make fighting easier for Tsukiyomi. And outside of that, it has a lot of projectile mechanics. And that is what I quickly want to talk about before we get to the Red Tusker rework. Because our lineup for guards in the past year has been very interesting in that regard. The last assassin was set, who was released together with Horus, in April of last year. Since then we've had two warriors, three mages, one hunter and one guardian. 
And one of the mages was a magical hunter, so Hyrus kind of looked at him as a hunter. So we have a mix of various releases and I think what we are likely going to see next is a guardian, also possibly a warrior, with Depthy, especially because of the massive size increase in the ultimate. So I would expect that that part is kind of covered because the last release before the assassin was Yomungandr and that was also a guardian. So that would fit in here. But then after that with Tsukuyomi, basically almost all people that have talked about it so far expected that it would be an assassin, just based on it fitting with the theme decently enough because there isn't really that much of a theme going on anyways. And because we are very overdue for an assassin, but it seems like we may be getting a hunter instead. And again, we had two hunters or one hunter, depending on how you want to look at it, since the last assassin and a lot of other guards. So that would be very surprising and somewhat disappointing to me. What I would be interested in seeing is an arranged assassin. So I'm not sure where this will go. And it could be that the panda character that comes after the red panda thing might be the assassin instead. But that honestly would be rather disappointing because the assassins already have their cutesy character with Veda Tosca. I don't think we need to have too many cutesy assassins in my opinion at least. So it's going to be very interesting what will happen with Chukuyomi in that regard. I'm looking forward to finding out. And with that, we're getting to the other cutesy assassin that I already talked about, that is Red Tusker. The information for this comes from Deadass and this is actually really interesting. So maybe you remember, I mentioned this a while ago, Ajax has actually talked about bringing multiple options for the Acorns back, though not as strong as the old version of the Acorn. Now we have files in the game that confirm that this rework is going to happen. We don't know how large it will be, but there are files for each individual new acorn. There are the tier 2 acorns, which are Lively Acorn and Nettle Acorn, and four tier 3 acorns being Bristle Bush Acorn, Thistle Thorn Acorn, Evergreen Acorn, and Thickback Acorn. These acorns are not the same ones that we used to have in terms of naming, just to keep that in mind. And they may or may not make it into the game sooner or later. Maybe this is just some testing version that they're playing around with. So I wouldn't necessarily assume that they're definitely coming in the next patch or something. If you're unfamiliar with the old acorns, here's what they used to do. The Sapphire Acorn used to allow you to stick your Acorn Blast, your three, two guards, so it would stick to them and then detonate after a while and deal some more damage. The Emerald Acorn would heal you for using your Acorn Blast, your three, something that he kind of has in every ability now. The Topaz Acorn would allow you to stun enemies by hitting them with your dash twice, back then you could dash through enemies multiple times. And the Opal Acorn would shoot lightning to nearby targets when you used your dash. I could see the Sticky Acorn making a return because that was one that wasn't completely overwhelming. Maybe some larger heal as well. But then based on the names, it may also be completely different effects that we should be expecting here. I could imagine that, for example, a thick back acorn will actually give you some tanky stats or something like that. So really, this is still very much up in the air and I don't want to speculate too much, but I'm excited for whatever they're doing with it. And that brings us to the skins for the upcoming patch. Also, all data mined by Daredust and he's the one who made the renders for them as well. All the links for the skins will also be down below if you want to look at them yourself. The first one is Spellchanter Apollo, which will be in an exclusive chest. Here's the card art, you can see him floating around on that glyph. Gives me a bit of a Doctor Who vibe actually. And you can also see that he has these glyphs around his hand, so this will probably be how he shoots his abilities. His in-game model is here, it actually keeps him relatively recognizable as Apollo still, and especially the stance obviously <laughs> aids with that, but I like the color theme that they went with. And here is the back, I especially like this astral liar that he has here, so it's still somewhere in his kit, but it has very different visuals to it. The next skin is the one that I personally like the most, which is Wave Rider Willish, also in an exclusive chest. This is basically a Baywatch themed Willish, but the reason why I like this so much is not necessarily because of the skin itself, but rather because of the idea, because she has this jet ski instead of Suku, and I think that's a very smart adaptation. After they already did the other skins, they kind of went away from having Sukuyo into this, I don't know, hover bike or something. They now went even further with a summary theme. 
This is the model from the front. Unfortunately, the skin was a bit complicated to render for Deadust, so he just left it in a T-pose. I think the weapon could have been a bit more creative. They could have gone with another pool noodle weapon or something here. I'm not quite sure why any Baywatch character would have a spear, but other than that, we have the model from the back here. And then we have the jet ski renders here as well. And I think, especially the jet ski, again, is a really cool concept for a skin. I wonder what it will look like when she uses her three, because she's just gonna throw a jet ski forward. The next skin is Vemtech Kamazots, and this one is from the next chapter of Grim Omens. Here we see the card art. Again, a card art where the model of it is really gigantic. Not gonna get that impression in game because it's just a normal Kamazot sized model. And this is what it's going to look like from the front. Not really much to say about this one here, it's just a tech themed Kamazots, really. And this is the model from the back. I think the wings are kind of cool, so I hope they have a bit of a mechanical vibe when he flaps them in-game, when he uses them for the leave and stuff. And the last one is Caustic Skies Nuwa, also from the Grim Omens event. This one has a bit of a cyberpunk, and this time I'm saying it right, I meant the uh, steampunk last time, but this time I actually mean cyberpunk vibe, or even a cyber goth vibe, if you will. And it's very unusual in terms of Nuwa skins, because most of her skins basically focus on her wearing as skimpy cloth as possible. Whereas this one has a bit more of its own theme. You can see the small Atom logo at the left here. This is apparently going to be her, her gems that float around her when she has charges of her passive. And this is what the model will look like from the front. Pretty cool style overall, I like this one, and it's something new for Nuwa in particular. Here's a back view of the model, and this part here is also very interesting. These are the minions, but the minions will have a turquoise smoke effect hovering around them when they walk around. And I don't know how that will look considering we can see the turquoise color in her hair, but I don't know how it will work with these minions, how vibrant it will be, or is it just a subtle effect. And depending on that, it could make them look pretty cool and make them stand out a lot. And here is the model from the back as well. I think overall these minions may be more recognizable than her clay minions when you're getting attacked by multiple minions, so it may in a way be a disadvantage for the skin, but that's just what you have to accept if you want to have this look. And that is it for all the data mining from this patch. This includes the Tsukuyomi stuff, this includes the Red Tusker stuff and the upcoming skins. Again, if you have not checked out the Cthulhu data mining yet, or the Depthy data mining, then there will be a link uh, showing up here at the end screen as well, so you can click that if you want. And other than that, I thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you want to be updated for more upcoming Smite stuff, feel free to hit the sub button and maybe the bell, it really helps me out. And other than that, see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.